This is by far my most requested video over the past few months. So here it is, the Monoprice Delta Mini 3D printer Cura settings video. I know that finding settings and information on this printer can sometimes be a little bit difficult. So these are the settings that I've been using in Cura 3.2. If they change or if I update them in the future, I will update them in the description. So as a great man once said, let's just jump into it. The number one resource for answers with pretty much anything to do with the Monoprice Delta Mini is this website right here, mpminidelta.com. I have nothing to do with this website, but it's so well organized. It's so well laid out and it gives you pretty much everything you need to know about this specific printer. There is an entire slicing section where they give you settings for Cura, Matter Control, Simplify 3D, and Slicer. So for today, we're gonna go into Cura, and this is where you can download for Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, the newest version of Cura. And you just download the profile and install it into your computer. Up until I got the Delta Mini, I was using an older version of Cura with the Monoprice Select Mini but the Delta works very well with the newer version of Cura. And the newest version just gives you a lot more options and control, and the interface is just prettier. So now that we've added the Monoprice Delta Mini to Cura, we can click on machine settings and you can see the actual settings. So if you didn't wanna download the profile and you just wanna type these in yourself, you can create a new profile from scratch. The X, Y, and Z width, depth, and height are 110, 110, and 120 millimeters. So the X min and Y min and X max and Y max are 20, 10, 10, 10. It's an elliptic build plate that originates at the center. It is a heated bed with one extruder. And this is also where you can start playing around with your G code if you feel like it. The G29 code is really the one that you might play with the most. This has to do with leveling the bed. Unfortunately, I don't have a be all end all perfect setting for this because I've been experimenting with it a lot myself. If my settings change in the future, I will update them in the description of this video. And then the extruder is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with 1.75 millimeters. And then you can jump down over here into the print settings. You should see a print area that looks very similar to your actual Delta Mini printer. And on the side, there are all of the settings. So I'm gonna walk through those pages with you right now and just show you what I've been using. So the first thing we'll do is quality. We'll keep a layer height of 0.1 millimeters. And one of the best things about Cura is if you hold the mouse over any setting, it will give you a description of what that setting does, what it affects. I really appreciate this. For shell, I've been leaving the default 1.2 millimeter and 0.2 millimeter thicknesses and those have been giving good results. Infill will change depending on your print unless it's a very specialized situation. I never go below 15% infill. I usually always do 15 or 20 on basic prints and then if I need something really strong that's where you go up to 50, 60, 70, even beyond in terms of infill. But for just simple prints I usually keep it between 15 or 20 but again this setting is going to change depending on what you're printing. When it comes to material, assuming you're using PLA, which is the easiest material to print with, keeping the printing temperature at 200 degrees usually gives you nice results. Keeping the build plate at 60 usually also gives good adhesion. The diameter for standard PLA is 1.75, the flow should be 100, and you do want to enable retraction to avoid stringing and all that nastiness. So when it comes to speed, the Delta is a very fast printer. So if you're getting good results, you could always come back and increase this a little bit to see if you can increase your print speed. I've been having good luck with 150 millimeters per second and then travel speed should be a little bit slower just to avoid causing any errors. For cooling, you definitely want to enable cooling. This will make sure that the fans run and keep the filament cool as soon as it's extruded. If you click generate support, Cura will give you a few options of either generating support everywhere, which means Anywhere that there's more than a 45 degree overhang, it's going to create a support. If you do support touching the build plate, then it will only create supports on overhangs that would go directly over the build plate, but not the model itself. For build plate adhesion, your options haven't really changed since the older version of Cura. Personally, since I have been having some leveling issues with the Delta Mini, I've been printing pretty much everything with a raft because I found that by the time the raft is complete, all the issues have been ironed out and then the model itself prints very very high quality 
and the raft just kind of takes up any first layer issues that might otherwise transfer to the model. So I do recommend rafts for most models, but it's not required. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I've also been using Simplify 3D with the Delta Mini and I've been getting really good results with that. So I may do another video with those specific settings in the future. In the meantime, I hope this was helpful. I hope this answers questions you might have about the printer. I will put all of the relevant links and information down in the description below. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Good luck, happy printing, and I will see you guys next time.